exponential growth and decay applications. In this concept, we're going to use the idea of exponential growth and decay functions in order to um, answer word problems. In the previous concept, we looked at this example about Instagram's growth from December 2010 all the way to June 2018. Um, and I used it just to show you what exponential growth looked like. But now we're going to use models to predict future amounts. So what we could do with this data right here is we could find an exponential function that models this growth. And then we could predict how many users Instagram would have in, say, 2020, 2022. 2025. So it's just a way for us to take existing data and predict the future. First, let's start off with some formulas. We'll start with the decay model and the growth model. Notice they look identical, except the decay model has a minus sign in front of the R, and the growth model has a plus sign in front of the R. Decay would be a subtraction, growth would be an addition. So the variables A, R, and T stand for initial amount, so however many people you start with, initial value. R stands for rate. Make sure that we always convert this to a decimal. So for example, if we had a 5% rate, then that would be 0 0.05. And T stands for time. So whenever we get a word problem, uh, maybe it's talking about a population um, or the amount of a substance left after a certain time period. These are the formulas that we're going to use, and we just need to figure out what our initial value is, how much we start with, the rate that we're growing or decaying by, and the time that we are wanting to know how much we have left. Now let's look at the formulas for compound interest. You're going to use these in financial situations. You'll be investing money, a beginning amount, a principal, um, which you'll see P in the formulas, either in a periodic situation, and in that case you use the formula on the left, or in a situation where your interest is compounded continually. And interest is the amount of money that the um, organization pays you in order to have your money invested. So let's look at what each of these values equals. So so for compounded interest, either periodically or continuously, A stands for our future amount or our ending amount. P stands for principal, which is our starting amount. N stands for the number of times per year that the interest, the amount of money that is paid to you um, from the institution that has your money, the number of times that that interest is compounded Per year. So when you're using these formulas, you're going to look for language that tells you how many times per year. Now, some of the this language that you might see, see or hear <laughs> is annual. So if your interest is compounded annually, then that's once a year, and you would let n equal 1 in your formula. If it says semi-annual, that is twice a year. So in that case, n would equal 2. If it says quarterly, that's four times per year, n equals four. Monthly, I know you can figure that out. That's 12 times a year, n equals 12. And then daily, we're gonna go ahead and use the number 365 for n. T is just like in the formulas above, it stands for the number of years. Okay, example one, we're going to write an exponential function to model the situation, and then we're going to solve for the indicated value. It says the population of city A was 23,456 in the year 2010. For the next five years, the population increased at an annual rate of 3%. Find the population of city A in 2015. So first of all, I want to figure out if this is a growth function or a decay function, and this word right here answers my question. Since the population is increasing, we're going to use our growth function. So start by writing down y equals a times 1 plus r to the t. And now we need to figure out what a, r, and t values are from the problem. So I'm going to put a, r, t. a is our initial amount. That's how much or how many people we started with. So 23,456. 
R is the rate at which we're increasing. So I see on here that it says a rate of 3%. I'm going to take that 3% and I'm going to move the decimal to the left two times. So instead of using 3 for rate, I'm going to use 0 0.03. And then time, it tells me that we started in 2010 with the initial amount. And I want to know what the population is in 2015. So that's a five-year difference. Now I'm going to take those three values and just plug them into the equation. So we have y equals 23,456 times 1 plus 0 0.03 to the fifth power. Now take your calculators out, and we're just going to plug that in to our calculator all at once and hit enter, and we should get our final answer. If you're having trouble putting this in your calculator, please pause your video and ask a teacher for help. Rounding to the nearest whole person, we get that the population in 2015 is going to be 27,192 people. Example 2, the value of a mountain bike can be approximated by the model y equals 200 times 0.75 to the t. This should be an exponent right here. Where t is the number of years since the bike was new. Tell whether this is exponential growth or decay, identify the percent increase or decrease, and find the value of the bike after six years. So we've got three things to do here. We're going to say whether it's growth or decay, we're going to find the percent increase or decrease, and then find the value of the bike after six years. Let's start by deciding whether this is a growth function or a decay function. So up here I've written my two equations, growth function as a plus sign, decay function as a minus sign. I can see pretty easily that my a value is 200, but normally I would have like a 1 plus or minus our rate in the parentheses here, and it's been condensed. So you have to ask yourself, do I get 0 0.75 by doing 1 plus something, or do I get it by doing 1 minus something? And the answer is you get it by doing 1 minus a number. So this is going to be a decay function. Next, we need to figure out what the rate is, the percent increase or decrease, in this case, the percent decrease. So we're going to ask ourselves to get the 0 0.1, excuse me, 0 0.75, I have to take 1 minus what value? Some of you may know that number right off the top of your head. Some of you may need to try some things in your calculator, and that's fine. But what we find is that if we take 1 minus 0 0.25, that gives us 0 0.75. So our rate of decrease is 25%. The last part of the problem asks us to find the value of the bike after six years. So we're going to take the formula that they gave us. We know that the bike started with a value of $200, and it's decreasing by 25% each year. So we're just going to plug 6 in for t, put this all in our calculator, and we get our bike to be valued at $35.60 after 6 years of owning it. Example 3. Sam wishes to invest $1,800 in an account that pays 5% interest and compounds quarterly. Find the balance of the account after three years. Then we're also going to find the value of the account after three years if the interest is compounded continuously. So since we're talking about an investment, we're going to use the compound equations that we have in our notes. First of all, we've got, it um, says right here, compounds quarterly. So we're going to use that periodic compounding equation. The first thing we're going to do is figure out what P, R, N, and T values are. It says that Sam wishes to invest $1,800, so that's going to be the starting amount, her principal, $1,800. We have interest of 5% per year, so 5% becomes 0 0.05. It says compound quarterly, so N is going to be 4, and T is 3. We're going to plug each of those values into the equation and then put that in our calculator and we get $2,089.36 for the amount in the account after three years. If you had trouble putting that um, equation in your calculator, please make sure that you ask a teacher for help. Next, we're going to find the value of the account after three years if the account is compounded continuously. This is a really important word for you to look for. Anytime the problem says continuously, 
we know that we're going to use PERT. So our principal is still 1800 rate is still 5%, and time is three years. E is just a number, so we're not plugging anything in for E. We're just going to use the E button on our calculator. So plug everything into the equation, plug it into your calculator, and we get $2,091.30. Example 4. Since 2015, Clay County has grown approximately 1.3% each year. The exponential function f of x models the population of Clay County, f of x, x years after 2015. Use this exponential function to answer the following. So something that's really important about this problem is our x value. x stands for the number of years after 2015. So first of all, we're asking, what is the predicted population in 2015? So in 2015, x would be 0, because 2015 is 0 years after 2015. So let's plug 0 into the equation for x. And maybe you already could have guessed this, but our answer is just 230,361 people. It was in our initial value spot, right? It was where a goes, so we probably could have guessed that. Next, it asks, what was the predicted population in 2020? So 2020 is 5 years after 2015, so our x value will be 5. Let's plug that into our equation. And we get 245,729 people. I did a quick Google search to see what the Clay County population was in 2020, and this model only is about 700 people off from what it actually was. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, and then the last one, what is the predicted population in 2030? 2030 is 15 years after 2015, so X is going to be tw is going to be 15. And when we plug that into our calculator, we get 279,609 people. Okay, this part of our notes is independent practice, so pause your video now, try these two problems, and restart the video to see my answers. For problem one, I got $8,596.72. You can see my work here. And for problem two. Be careful on problem two with your rate. Make sure that you have 0 0.035. We always move the decimal to the left two times. And one more time, if you're having any trouble with plugging these into your calculator, because some of them can be a little difficult, please, please ask your teacher for help. 